So your mind does this thing where, you know, when you're holding a baby and immediately your mind goes, oh man, it'd be a shame if I dropped this baby. And like, Why did I think <laughs> that? No. Right? <laughs> no, I'm, this, is, this is a great example because what yeah. your brain is doing, it's anticipating danger. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us to another episode of the Let's Dream podcast. We have our host, Lee. Nice to meet you, everyone. And I'm Casey Lucid. And today, we will be going over tricks that our brain plays on us. Um, we're going over this because it relates a lot to dreams and lucid dreaming. I'm sure a lot of the listeners have experienced being lucid in a dream, and then somehow the dream takes over, or you can't go lucid, or... A lot of different variations of that. So this is basically some topics that we're going to discuss where your brain plays tricks on you while you're awake, and some of these also translate into the world of dreams. So the first one that we have, it's the illusion of transparency. Yeah, Casey, so why does your brain want to trick you that it's not lucid? So I think it has a lot to do with evolution. And when you think about how our brains are kind of set up to keep us alive, basically, but also they're, they're very efficient. They don't want to use extra energy if they don't have to. So I think it's, some, it, it's maybe a combination of the two where it's like you're dreaming and then your brain just wants to go on autopilot while it's converting long-term or short-term memories into long-term memories, which a lot of that happens during sleep. But also it may be that it's running simulations of, you know, like things that you may need to work out in your brain. And so it's, it's like, I feel like, and I think a lot of lucid dreamers can relate to this. It's like, it takes extra effort to get to the point of being lucid in a dream. But once you do, it, it can seem like it just flows. It's almost like catching a wave or surfing is what I imagine. Okay. Like. So basically, because our brains are so efficient, dreaming is a great way of processing things. And it's, it's similar to like, hey, if you're studying, you're either going to review it a thousand times or you're going to review it like three times and let it sleep and then kind of let it process. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's a good analogy or um, but for some reason, I just thought about this. It's kind of like so I don't know about you, but like, have you ever been working on something and, you know, like while you're awake, you're working on something and then your girlfriend comes around and she's like, hey, can you do this or can you go do that? And it's kind of like. I'm in the middle of something, like, I have to do <laughs> right now. And it's like, I, I don't know if it's just a guy thing. I know a lot of guys that it happens to, but I, I think our brain is like that. It's kind of like, I'm trying to do this right now. Like, do I have to do that right now? So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, that's how I like to think of it, just like as a metaphor. No, I think that's a great example of how, like, the brain works, because that's pretty much how the, <laughs> yeah, the brain will yeah. want to do what is best and most efficient. Yeah, I think so. So what do you have for our brain tricks? So the first one is called the illusion of transparency. Basically, it's a, cog it's a cognitive bias that causes us to overestimate the degree to which other people can read our emotional state. So does this mean like, hey, if I'm feeling weird at a, like a social gathering or party, I'm thinking all the people can thinking that the same way about me? Is that... Or... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, I think a better, that can be a situation like that. Uh, like a better example would be usually with couples, you'll have, well, like either the guy or the girl, I've seen it in, in both parties. Where oh, okay. It's like, like, Hey, they should pick up on this, that I'm feeling this, but usually it's not the case. You know, it's like, like I've had that happen with my fiance and vice versa where it's like, Hey, how can you not like, how are you not picking up on? And it's like. It's like we think that they can feel our emotions, but that's just not oh, true. Okay. No matter okay. how, no matter how much we think it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, great example. But isn't that egotistical? Yeah, yeah, that, it definitely is. Um, a lot of these are actually. It's kind of funny when we go down the list. A lot of these are, but I, I don't know. That's how we're, how we work, I guess, or a lot of how we function. <laughs> mm. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for that one. It's like obviously other people can't feel your emotions. That's that's why it's important, you know, to communicate with conversation and also to pay attention to the person. That's one thing that really, really bothers me, especially about our modern society. It's like when a person is talking to you and like like somebody somebody's like talking to you and you like if you're just looking at your phone, God, that just drives me insane. You know? <laughs> 
It's like because they can't pick up. You got to pick up on their social cues or like their expressions. Yeah, definitely nowadays, since you know, especially during this uh, lockdown, or if you can still call it that, yeah. most people are interacting online, and we're not able. You know, depending on the video or if it, or it's just voice chat. We can't pick up on like physical cues, body language, it, or it's much harder to over video because we're not there in person and it's hard. And there's like certain latency between the, uh, the voice. Yeah. Yeah. So nowadays it's so, and, and because like texting is so common, like that, a lot of that is actually kind of lost, isn't it? Yeah. And that's, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought up texting because I don't know about you, but I've had it happen so many times where I text something to someone and then they're like, are you okay? Are you angry? Are you? <laughs> it's like, cause you can't <laughs> oh, relay the that emotion. Of transparency, right? <laughs> or wait. Yeah. It's just like, I guess like the reverse of that, like they can't pick yeah, up on a, your, yeah, yeah, your yeah. Emotions. They can't pick up, <laughs> but they overestimate some degree of an emotional state, probably their own. Yeah. Uh, maybe, okay, maybe, no. <laughs> maybe it'll, maybe this, this may be something that keeps getting worse as technology becomes more advanced and we become more individualized. Oh man. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is basically the spotlight effect. And this is kind of like where you think you're the center of attention. It's, it's similar to the previous one, except it's more like, like, let's say some people are talking and you think they're talking about you, which that's not the case at all, you know? To me, this sounds like anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> like, um... Yeah. This really... And, and is this really called, like, the spotlight effect? Is this the correct... Yeah. I guess, I don't yeah, know, that's, scientific term? Oh, I don't, I don't know the scientific ter term okay. for it, but um, I did... Uh, when I was looking these up, I did hear it being referenced to like this okay. a lot. Okay. And some people... With some people, though, it, it becomes really like amplified to the point where it ends up being like the Truman show where people will yeah. literally have like, that's like a disorder where people will literally think everything's about them and they're like in some kind of a hidden TV show. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is also, it, it makes me think of anxiety cause I uh, deal with it, but also I think it doesn't have to be full anxiety. It's, um, it sounds, it also sounds to me like kind of a sense of self, right? So if yeah. you're, how strong is your sense of self? And that's going to sound weird, but when you're walking down the street and some guy walks up to you and tells you you're, you're a piece of crap or something, like, how's that going to affect you? Like, you don't even know this guy. So should it, should, you, should it affect you? You know, and people with stronger sense of self will be like, who the heck is this guy? And they'll just like go on with the day. But people, yeah. who, if you have like, say, the spotlight effect where your sense of self is kind of diminished, I can see that, like the person being, oh man, now everyone else is going to think I'm a piece of crap because this guy knows yeah. everyone else must know yeah. as well right that makes sense you know what's funny though it's um that that makes perfect sense it's just that there's so many times where i stop to think about like for example we we were out with some family one time and we were out on this uh it was like a pier looking uh area and there was this girl with her friends and like she tripped and fell down and um uh, but she was fine you know nothing yeah. bad but you could tell that she was really embarrassed about it but, you know, like, it was like, oh, that girl fell. Oh, okay. Like, we were just like, oh, okay, whatever. And we kept walking. But I imagined from her perspective, she was probably like, oh, my God, it's so embarrassing. Everybody's, like, looking at me. I can't believe this. <laughs> but from our, from everybody else's perspective, it was just like, oh, okay, she fell. Oh, she's, she's, she seems all right. We just keep walking. Yeah. So it's just it's so interesting to think about that. It's like pretty much nobody really gives a damn. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's true. But people. People get so like caught up in it. It's, oh man, yeah. it's so easy to do. Um, it is, yeah. Um, okay, then okay. The next one is confirmation bias. So this one is people tend not to like every like when people tend not to like something about someone, then they end up not liking everything. So as opposed to realizing that everyone has good and bad qualities, basically you you place great you place greater emphasis. Or even seek out things that confirm what you already believe at the same time ignoring or discounting anything that opposes your existing idea. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm pretty familiar with this one. And this one is, it's very adaptive and also very dangerous for the brain, depending on uh, how far you go with your own biases. Yeah. Yeah. So that one can get really, this one can actually get really dark. Um, oh, yeah. Like... 
somebody somebody does something bad, so then they're a shithead for the rest of their life. It's kind of like that's that's probably not the right way to look at things. No, but we both have this friend. He has a lot of confirmation biases, and just him dealing with things it makes it so much harder for him to really get past obstacles in life because of it. And if you really want to change your life, you really got to look at yourself and self-reflect about like, hey, is this what I'm thinking about this particular thing true? And you may not even know what the other side looks like. And that's why it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually. So something that's really okay, like this is kind of personal, but I'll still share it because I think people will enjoy it. So I was born and raised in Bulgaria, which is like one of the defining things of our culture is like we hate Turkish people <laughs> and it's like it's pretty much like they pretty much teach it to you in school and and I remember when we first came to the US when I was like 10 or 11 the very first friend that I made and like we were really great friends we we played with each other and we got along fine and then like at some point I realized that he was Turkish and that's when it clicked to me. Like I, I had like an aha moment where I'm like, "Oh, adults are full of bullshit." Because <laughs> this kid is, yeah, like this kid is awesome. Turkish people can be totally cool. So that was like one of that's like one of my favorite aha moments is where it's like, "Oh, now you shouldn't just completely judge someone for one thing that it wasn't even them that did it." You know? Yeah, that's brilliant. And you know, racism is kind of like. It's, yeah. it's taught and the confirmation bias are taught and learned through your life as well. And it doesn't have yeah. to be like, you know, racism is kind of like extreme and common case, unfortunately. And it's easy example of confirmation bias. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's confirmation bias. And then the next one is actually, I really like this one. Uh, we can really get into this one, but the Milgram experiment. So some, some of the listeners may be familiar with this, but basically this is where people go through great lengths for authority. And basically, Stanley Milgram, a professor at Yale University, measured the willingness of study participants, men from a diverse range of occupations with varying levels of education, to obey an authority figure who instructed them to perform acts conflicting with their personal conscience. Partic participants were led to believe that they were assisting an unrelated experiment in which they had to administer electric shocks to a quote-unquote learner, these fake electric shocks gradually increased to levels that would have been fatal had they been real. And the experiment found, unexpectedly, that a very high proportion of subjects would fully obey the instructions, um, albeit reluct reluctantly. So, Yeah, so this yeah. one is, uh, this one's huge because um, I learned this in psychology, and a lot of this study was done to be like, are uh, done to explain why you know german a lot of germans followed the uh you know the uh nazi um order and we learned that hey a lot of them thought this isn't my responsibility of uh torturing this prisoner torturing this other race i was just told to do so it's not my it's not my fault yeah so this one is very this one is very dark also it's kind of like Oh, I have the authority to do this, so I can do it. So it's kind of like letting, I don't know, it's really, it's really kind of messed up. <laughs> oh, for sure. And it's a, like, this is kind of like a brain trick because in reality, you know what you're doing is wrong, but you think it's okay to do it. Like you're tricking yourself into thinking it's, it's okay to do it because somebody tells you it's okay to do yeah. it. Yeah. You know? But you, in reality, you're the one pressing that button and electrocuting another person. Exactly. And this goes both ways since like, hey, there is a higher quote unquote authority, uh, someone that places higher in like the ladder than you, giving you the orders. And if you even if you don't look at it in this situation where you press an electric shock, most of the time as humans, we tend to think like, hey, this person has made their way up into like, you know, corporate ladder or like he's a higher position than me in at this job. We're gonna we're gonna take that experience and you know reputation along with it. You know, we're going to give that credit where it is deserved, right? So, hey, this person can't be wrong. And if he's telling me to do stuff, he must be right as well. Which is also, when you think about it, that's also a kind of confirmation bias. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, they're good at their job. Sure. They must be good at a lot of things, which is, which is total BS. Um, what you said about the, uh, what was it? 
the uh, willingness to uh, give up to higher authority or seek authority. Did you yeah. did you see that a little experiment? Uh, I forget which school did it, but um, might have been Yale. They did this psychology experiment where they put um, they took the prisoners, the prisoners yeah, the, all the students, and they they separated into prisoners and the other half, the security guards, and they had to like um, cancel it like within like three days because the uh, yeah. the guards, <laughs> the students that become guards, abused their authorities. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, man. That I I tell you, it's there's definitely something. What it I think Lincoln said. Lincoln said, if you want to find the true measure of a man, give him power. You know, give him authority, give him power, because they'll they'll show you their true self. Oh yeah. I think most most people, I think some people are definitely fit to handle power and authority. Those are very few. Those and the thing is, everybody thinks that oh, I would be a great leader, or like yeah, I mean, like everybody wants to be a chief. And like, what is it that old saying? Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it's it's kind of like this is actually something that I really like to ask people to get. Like, if you really want to get a good idea of how self righteous someone is, ask them. If we were in Nazi Germany and you were a German, do you think you would have sided with the Nazis? Because statistically, like most of the regular people would have sided with them. Oh, for because sure. Now, hindsight, in hindsight, we know that that's a wrong thing to do. But when you think about the fact that you're just trying to abide to society and, and go with yep. what your culture tells you, like you're trying to survive. So you're not necessarily, even though most of the Nazis, you can argue that, well, I don't know, I don't, don't want to say that. A lot of the people that were forced to work for the Nazis were good people, but they were forced to do things that maybe they didn't really agree with them. But as this experiment outlined, they were listening to authority. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and what you asked, I think that's a heavy question to ask people, <laughs> but for sure, more than not, if, if they said they weren't, I would, I would take them as a liar. Yeah. I mean, like it's a, it's a very like, and I've asked people before and they're like, I would never do that. And it's like, well, then you're not truly aware of who you are as a person if that's your answer because you you need to be aware of the fact that people would go through great lengths for survival you know like oh yeah when it's survival against ethics survival usually wins you know so it's yeah. it's kind of like another example to kind of relate to how our brain tricks us is that we all know some guy that's like, oh man, I, like if I got into a fight, I could like I could whoop him, I could like do this. It's like, no, you're not. You're not gonna do that. Like, have you ever been in a real fight? That's not how it goes. It's like you're scared for your life. It's not. <laughs> you don't know how vulnerable you are, or how prone you are to like command. How prone you are. Hey, when when you see when you see your neighbor get tossed in, you know, tossed in the jail for supporting you know Jews, you're like, oh man, I got to protect my family because. You know, if I do that, the same thing is going to happen to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully that never happens again in, yeah. you know, in future of, of humanity. But that's why it's important to think about things like this or that, um, you know, like our brain tricks us into thinking that we're greater than we actually are. But then if you manage to humble yourself to realize your shortcomings, then you can actually, it's almost like a catch 22, you know? No, oh, for sure. This is this is a great uh, like trick that your brain plays on you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So enough of that one. On to the next one. Um, the Barnum effect, also called the Fourier effect, in psychology, is the phenomenon that occurs when individuals believe that personality descriptions apply specifically to them more so than to other people, despite the fact that the description is actually filled with information that applies to everyone. So. Great example of this is astrology. If you uh, read your, uh, if you read your like a uh, astrological sign, or like uh, like they're very, they're usually very broad. They're very general, like in the way that they're um, described or and vague. And but the thing is, you feel like it's speaking directly to you. You know. Yeah. What was it? Like, uh, there's, there's over, what, what are we, like, close to 8 billion people now on Earth? Like, 7.8 billion Very people close, or something yeah. like that? Very close. So, 
in in the U.S. alone, if you say like you can say some gen general things like you know like for white men in their thirties or whatever, it's like but if you make it like you make it general and then like the person reading it will think it's about them specifically, you know, and that that's another ego thing as you pointed out earlier. Yeah. So when you said this, I don't know why, but my brain went to like, uh, you know, the pumpkin spice Starbucks latte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like people like that's kind of become an identity or like being basic. <laughs> I don't know if that really applies, but that's where my mind went to when the, I heard the description. <laughs> You're filling out like a, a demographic or something yeah. on paperwork and it's like... Oh, that's so like, me. That's so <laughs> me. <laughs> it's like, what are you? Are you white, Asian? I'm pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> like, oh, that's so me. <laughs> uh, I think I think marketing probably the marketing industry would probably be the one that takes advantage of this one the most. Oh my god, dude! They, the marketing have so many psychologists working for them. They know if you look at a logo, they know where your mind's going to go to and they're, they're going to like uh, design their logo to make you think of their product. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the yeah. idea, but just like, uh, just like how Burger King is going to change. They're going to get rid of their blue logo because there's no blue in a burger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, they can, um, I don't, I don't know if it's like good or bad though. Like the thing is marketing is just, um, I think it, there's, I definitely think there's too much of it. But I don't, I don't know. It's like, I think some of it's good, some of it's bad. I don't, I don't like it per se because it really preys on, you know, they, like I said, they have a lot of psychologists working for marketing teams and they prey on things um, that you might not even be aware of. And it's going it's, to, it will condition you to, you know, crave their product. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another brain trick, you know, marketing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, just, it's a whole Jedi mind trick. And they do so um, much research into it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Well, okay. So let the, then the next one, let's go into the next one, which is everyone should be familiar with this one. It's called a Freudian slip. People usually associate this with when your subconscious makes you say something you didn't really want to say, but you say it anyway by accident. Um, while this is a common assumption, this is actually when you say what you're most afraid of. So you're basically thinking about the thing that you're not supposed to say and because the focus of is is that what you're thinking of, then you end up saying it. Yeah. So this is a great brain trick. I might have an example of this because it's really funny. So the other day, I joined my uh, friend's kind of voice chat. It was like a voice group chat. I joined up and like one of my friends was like, hey, how are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Uh, I got the virus vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it so slow and everyone freaked out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. Why did I say that? <laughs> but yeah, I got the shot and like I was trying to think of the word, but I couldn't okay. think of the word and I just said virus and just paused on it. <laughs> uh, that's great. That's great. Um, no worries. I got it too. Uh, we're both fine. Alive nice. and kicking. Um, but, um, yeah, actually, I like this one a lot because actually I can think of a lot of instances where, <laughs> where it relates to dreams. Okay, so I have a funny story about that one too. So, I don't know about you or any of the listeners, but whenever I ever go to the bathroom in my own house, I always, always, always have to check behind the curtain. Like, it's, <laughs> okay. like it, it's not, it's not even... It's weird because like I know I'm the only one home, for example, and then I'll still lock the door and I'll still check behind the curtain. Like, what does that say about me? <laughs> but like, even if I just went to the restroom like an hour ago and I know I'm the only one home and I checked it then, I'll still check it when I go back in. So in my dreams, I've had multiple dreams where I'll go like, and you know, it's weird. Like sometimes <clears throat> when you're dreaming, things are a little off and you're like, God, this feels a little weird. Yep. And then, like, I'll go to the bathroom, and then, like, I'll be thinking, I'll be, like, halfway lucid, and I'll be like, okay, okay, there's not going to be a monster, there's not going to be a monster. <laughs> and then I'll pull back the curtain, and it's like, god damn it, there's a monster here. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> and like and the weirdest one is like one time it was like a gigantic cockroach oh. and like and it was just taking a shower and it was like oh was like, like what human size like, you mean yeah like oh, human sized cockroach and it, like i was like i was like frozen in fear and and then i woke up but like the cockroach just looked at me like hey man do you mind <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's scary but it's just funny because like in my mind, I'm like thinking like, okay, there's not going to be a monster. There's not going to be a monster. And then like, bam, there's a monster. And it's like exactly like a Freudian slip, but like in the yeah, dream yeah. version, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> so your mind does this thing where, you know, when you're holding a baby and immediately your mind goes, oh man, it'd be a shame if I dropped this baby. And you're like, why did I think <laughs> that? No. Right? <laughs> no, I'm, this, is a, this is a great example because what yeah. your brain is doing, it's anticipating danger and letting you know like, hey, you better not – what happens if you imagine you, – you, you literally imagine dropping the baby. It's not because you're a yeah. bad person but that's the <laughs> danger that your mind is telling you that you shouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what happens behind like a Freudian slip is like in the back of your mind, your mind's already saying – Oh no, oh no, don't do this thing. Don't say this thing. Don't say this thing. It will make you look like a, a weirdo. And then, and then if you get to worrying about it too much, you're going to let it slip. Yeah. As the name implies. Yeah, it's, ex it's exactly how it is in a dream. That is exactly how, like, <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, and as we said, you know, previously, your, your, your brain's trying to, like, prepare you for scenarios when you're dreaming a lot of the time. So, yeah. So I like that one. And the next one, so basic heuristics. So this is basically when your mind can't actually calculate or perceive the reality of the situation and you end up defaulting to what you've previously concluded. So an example can be trial and error, rule of thumb, educated guess. But a better example would be, for example, how some people are afraid of flying in a plane and they're not afraid of driving a car even though driving a car is so much more dangerous than flying in a plane statistically so this is basically like things where they make it makes sense when you think about it but it doesn't make sense in the moment you know okay so is it is it your perception that is distorted yes okay so like for example there there's a there's only what like four deaths from shark attacks per year people are afraid of sharks you know when you go in the water yeah. it's because it's like you're right then and there and also, I mean, like, movies and all that, but it's, like, it's basically when you default to thinking more of, like, I guess it can be, like, a worst-case scenario. Although, I've never understood how, like, I've never been afraid to fly in a plane, but I'm terrified every time I get behind the wheel, you know? So, it's, like, it's basically people that kind of, like, it has a lot to do with feeling, I guess, more yeah. than logic. And I think that kind of fear gets them. It's just, like, hey, flying, you're literally, like, tens of thousands of feet in the air. I guess if you're behind the wheel, you're you might feel more in control. Yeah, I I would imagine someone thinking like that would think, "Oh no, I'm in a plane, and if it crashes, it's gonna go all the way down, all those tens of thousands of feet, and I can't do anything about it." They don't have enough parachutes, you know. They're just kind of like hyping yeah. themselves I up mean, to worry, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's it's true that it's so like <laughs> maybe it's just I don't know. It's much more dramatic you know like whenever you if you crash in a plane it's not like crashing in a car but i don't know like i can't wait for self-driving cars nah, personally yeah. i hate driving i hate cars but i think i think what you said is really big because you know a plane crash is huge but you know a car crash doesn't explode typically right and you know what else is um i think this can be kind of like th this can also relate to dreams in a way because Sometimes in dreams, like something like epic will be happening and I'll just be like, huh, huh, okay, yeah, that's whatever. And like, I've had multiples of dreams where I've just like literally fallen out of space, like from outer space onto the earth, like just with my body, with nothing else, no ship, no, like just, just my regular body. And it's just like, okay, it's like a regular dream. But then I've had like, other dreams, you know, like looking behind the curtain and like freaking out, you know. <laughs> and you're like, frozen in terror because there's a giant yeah. human sized cockroach taking a shower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh, man. just not not I so wanna, logical. I wanna see some like dream psychologists like analyze like the heuristics of that. 
<laughs> and have like a poll yeah. like would you be more afraid of this cockroach taking a shower or this awesome plane crash or explosion <laughs> yeah i don't know like that's why i think you know like dreams are i mean they're fascinating but also like emotions are uh huge huge in dreams but yeah that's pretty much it for that one and then the next one is the blame game and that's not the scientific name for it i just i wasn't sure what exactly to call it but um everybody everybody knows exactly what this is it's basically when you point the blame towards others even though it's your your own fault and people often do this unconsciously but the odd thing is it's actually very healthy of a person to recognize that it's not their own fault as long as it's true you know so it's because you have people that blame themselves for everything which that's not good but you also have people that blame everybody else for everything and that's also not good so it's basically you know like take ownership which i think we mentioned earlier and a lot of this has to do with you know protecting your ego some people go through life and they learn how to like not take the blame and that's serve them at a certain point of time in their life but typically in adulthood when you take these things into adulthood they're twisted because they, they've been taught from such a younger age and that they have no longer a use yeah i like this one because i feel like it relates a lot to lucid dreaming because in a lucid dream it's like you you have to take control like you know I mean, you don't have to take control, but you have to realize that you're in control, you know, you can, or you can still just kind of like, when you're lucid, you don't necessarily have to control everything. You can just kind of experience it, but you realize that you have a key role in everything. So it's, it's a really cool, I don't know, it's a really cool thing to come to the realization of. That's why I like stoicism so much is because it's kind of like, you know, you're being in control of yourself, try to realize what you can control and then just focus on that. And I think there's a lot of power behind that. Mm. Well said. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. Um, I actually, uh, I remember one, like uh, a while ago, I had made a post where um, it talked about, like, I, f- I feel that there's a lot of similarities between stoicism and lucid dreaming in the sense that control outside of self-control is an illusion. And then you can say the same thing about lucid dreaming because like once in, inside of a dream, once you realize that you're in control, you can actually control everything. And I, th- I think a lot of people in real life often don't think that they have control over what's happening to them, but you always have some level of control over, over what's happening to you. Yeah. I, I truly believe that. But you got to recognize what is in and what is out of your control. That's the trick. <laughs> yeah, that's the trick right that's, there. That is the trick. That's <laughs> the hardest part, even though I said it so simply, but that is the absolute hardest part. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the last one that we have here, and this is another one that everyone should be familiar with, it's false memories, kind of self-explanatory. So I'm just going to relate it straight to dreams because um, have you ever had a dream where it's like, let's say you meet a person or you find an object and somehow you immediately know the entire story behind that object or behind that person. And it's something that your brain just fabricated on the spot and it's just like, you have that. Have you ever had that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that it's false memories? Like, or is it just like understanding the concept that your brain just put in for you? Well, so, I, okay, so like a false memory in real life would be, and I have a perfect example for real life. So okay. this was maybe like two, two or three weeks ago. Um, I was out in the backyard and I was doing some yard work or something. And then my fiance comes out and... She looks at the, like, <clears throat> I had thrown out these cranberries, you know, like I had, the, the, we had these cranberries that were getting old and I'm like, we're not going to eat them. So I just threw them out on the yard for birds to eat them. And, um, and she comes out and she looks around and she's like, oh man, look at all these cranberries that the birds haven't eaten yet. I threw them out here like two or three days ago. And I was like, you threw cranberries out here two or three days ago? And, and she was like, yeah. And I just started laughing because I'm like, I just did that like a couple of days ago. Like it was like, I knew for a fact that it was me and I'm like, I did that. You did the same thing. And she was like, Oh no. See, I thought of like, I was thinking about doing it and I thought that I had done it and I had forgotten about it. And then I saw them and then I thought I did it. So it's like, (laughs) you know, that's a, I think that's a perfect example of a false memory where it's like, 
you might be thinking of something and then the situation happens and you think that it actually happened because of something you did. I don't know. Like that's what comes to my mind is like, I lost my keys and I swear to God, I put them like right at this counter. And I'm like, there's no way <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that, that's a good one. Or, uh, I don't know about you, but I, uh, I'm very meticulous about making sure that all of my bills are paid on time. And sometimes I'll set money aside and I'll be like, okay, I have to use this to pay this. And then I'll look at my bill and it's like, oh, oh, I already paid it. You know, like, like that's maybe one example. I think it's similar to how our brain just makes memories in our dream. It just, it completely fabricates everything. I mean, like it's not to the same extent. Okay. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but it is, it is funny how I guess that when you're in a dream, you kind of understand most of the things or accept it for what it is. And you understand whatever amalgam of like, I guess, different things are going on. Like you have a fish, you have a bird and they're both, you know, the bird is swimming, the fish is flying. You're like, oh, hey, yeah, I remember a time when that's real, I guess. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, it also makes me think of, you know, how um, eyewitness, like eyewitnesses are just completely unreliable. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. like... <laughs> Because our our memories are just pretty like <laughs> incredibly bad. And then and then you also have like confirmation bias, like punching its way into the into like the eyewitnesses like person. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. I swear to God, it was this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yup. <laughs> so yeah, the, those those are basically the all of the brain tricks um, that we have so far. But I think everybody can kind of see how they relate to dreams and a lot of the tricks that our brain plays on us not only during the sleep but also during waking hours yeah so i think i think it's as you said before like a lot of these things really they're not some of them do have negative effects but um a lot of it a lot of times it's just our brain um adapting to real life circumstances and it's important that's, yeah. that's- and it's important to like recognize what is affecting you. And, you know, just like as we've said with their dreams, you know, try to recognize like themes of your dreams that are consistently uh, there, if there is any. Yeah. <clears throat> um, do you, do you want to close it out? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we we're done or just like meander a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I just saw it was like 45 minutes. Okay, okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, my thing is over. Okay. Yeah. So I, that's all we have for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for keeping up with us this far. Um, if you want to check us out, our social media is in the description. And if you like our podcast, share it with a friend. Tell them about it. Tell us some dream stories. And we'll see you all next time. Mm-hmm.